Hey guys, Mike Hayden here. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate if you subscribe. If you get something out of this video, give us a like and a thumbs up. If you do have any comments or questions, post it in the comment below. In this video today, we're going to be talking about Victron's Easy Solar versus the Multi RS Solar and the difference between the two of them. Just to give you a bit of background for myself and what I've done with these over the years. Now, we're not the sort of business or company to go out and get the newest, latest product from Victron, make a video on it, promote it. I've run a business for over a decade now installing these products out in the market every single day. And I really like the RS450s as an example. We've had a really good success for those. And they've been out for a couple of years now. On the early models, after we got them and started testing, we weren't really happy with them. So we waited for a while before we started offering these to our customer base. Now we get the question all the time, the difference between the Easy Solar and the RS. I'm gonna dive into this video and show you the difference. And both products are pretty limited what they can do in each situation. But as long as you're using it for its right application, you're gonna have a good experience with it. So let's dive in now. We'll start with the Easy Solar. Now these Easy Solars are all in one unit. So they come with the solar regulator built in. So they've got a 250 slash 70 built into them. So more of a low voltage when you compare it to the Multi RS, which has a 450 volt input. Now this Easy Solar with an all-in-one actually comes in 24 volt and also 48 volt and it comes in a 3 kVA and also a 5 kVA inverter charger. Now these actually come inside them with a Venus operating system already from Victron. Now to remotely program these products, you can actually do them from the VRM portal. So you can do everything remotely. As long as it's on the internet, you'll be able to do everything like that. You can use a Victron Connect app to get into these locally and see what's going on locally. And you can also use the VRM app. Now from an installation point of view, these are an easy situation if you just want something basic. Now when I say basic, you can parallel these, you can add things to them, so you can actually have an easy solar two with a multi plus next to it. So in the future if you've got a 5 kVA easy solar and you want to add another 5 kVA inverter, yes you can do that. You can also add another MPPT, so you can add an external MPPT if you want to add more things to it. Now, when you start going bigger than that there, that's where you're gonna have the complications in adding adding to this. You've only got limited inputs when it comes to monitoring your information in through the Venus device, which actually has this internally. Compared to with the servo device, you've got a lot more inputs that you can actually use for the servo devices. Where I recommend these for, if you've got a tiny house, a motorhome, you're looking to probably stick around the 24 volt situation. Anything like that, they actually do work great in weekenders. We've done a lot of installations over the years where we've used these easy solar products over the years for people, and they've just been great. They're really simple. They work great when it just comes to that one inverter, one charge controller. What we have done, we've actually AC coupled a lot of these over the years, which I'll actually link the video up here, which you can see what AC coupling or using a grid connect inverter off grid does. That's been a really successful step for us as a business over the years. We've designed using AC coupled, and it's really made these easy solars really usable of a day. You can turn off a ton of loads, and take advantage of using the excess solar from your PV inverter and limit those loads of a night so you don't drain your batteries flat. Now there is another downside I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on in the video about these, some issues I actually had over the years, but we'll save that to the end. Let's jump over and have a look more at the Multi RS. Now very similar unit when it comes to an all-in-one, so you've got your PV in here and you've also got your inverter charger all in the one. Now the early models of these that come out actually did not have an input for AC charging, so you could not plug a generator to them you couldn't plug the grid into them. They were literally just an inverter, no inverter charger, and you couldn't AC coupling. So when we first learned about these, we sort of stood back from them because it's not how we design systems. We really like using AC coupling in our off-grid solar systems. And the advantage you've got of these 450s here, and especially for us in Australia, in Australia, we require an earth fault alarm, so they come with an earth fault alarm where we're installing solar panels. But from an installation point of view, you can put nine to 10 panels, depending what brand of panels you can, in a, in a row when you're doing more panels in series to make an easy installation on the roof, so less cables running down from the roof. One of the other things one of the early models had, it only had one tracker. If you look down below, you'll see the two data sheets. The first model come out only had one tracker. So both sets of solar panels you actually had facing the same way, it only had one tracker. Now over the years, I've done some experiments with this here. You do, if you do have a panels, one face in east, one face in west, and you combine them on the MPPTs, I've found you lose about five to 10% capacity. If you can really max it out, it doesn't really matter anyway. But the new model of this does have two trackers, which really gives you that flexibility of having a set of panels east and a set of panels west, or north or west, whichever configuration works best for you in your situation. It allows each set of panels to track independently. Now, the other great thing about these is because they're using Victron's high frequency technology. Now, there is a downside to that there. They're a lot lighter, and you're getting a 6 kVA inverter compared to a 5 kVA inverter on the Easy Solars. So you're getting a little bit more grunt out of them. 
Now, one downside with this, you can't parallel them. So on a single phase, you can't have a 6 kVA and a 6 kVA on that same phase, but you can actually use them in a three-phase situation. So you can have one on each phase in a three-phase and get them to all work in a three-phase situation, which is great. Now, the easy solder, you could still do that in a three-phase situation, but there are some complications with that there. The reality most people are going off grid, very rarely is three phase actually required. The reality is you're probably better spending money on buying an energy efficient appliance. So a lot of people ask, I want a three phase welder mic when we're designing systems for them. And the reality is you're probably better off spending the money on a more energy efficient welder. I've got a little uni MIG welder, which is an all in one, which does stick, TIG, arc, everything all in one. And it pulls about two and a half thousand watts welding 10 mil plate steel. So, um, Better money is spent on getting a more energy efficient welder these days than trying to use a big three-phase welder. Going down that three-phase path is something that you want to do. I'd probably highly recommend, probably not use this unit. We're gonna do a test with these at my place because I'm actually three-phase connected to the grid. We'll jump over to the data sheet and I'll show you a few things, a few differences between the two of them. Now, with this all-in-one with the Venus, you don't need an extra Serbro. Now, when it comes to the multi-RS, you actually don't need a Serbro for this here. You can do everything through Victron Connect. I'd highly recommend though, if you want more controllability and be able to do more things, I'd actually add the Serbro in, into this here. All the ones we do, we put a Serbro in it, it makes it a lot easier to program and do things remotely than using the Victron Connect app. Now, as stated before, you can use the 250 volt maximum voltage in there from your solar panels, where the RS4000 is 450 volt maximum in. What we've done here, in the past, we normally just put four solar panels into this one here, and then we might put 12, 15 panels into an AC coupled inverter. So it's easy to install on the roof, and you've also got panels direct to batteries plus the AC coupling. Now with these multi RSs, you can actually still AC couple them, which is great. So really depending on what you're doing from an installation point of view is what I'd recommend which one to choose. Now, if, if possible, I think out of the two of them, in my opinion, the RS solar gives you a lot more usability now, some differences and downsides, I suppose, between the RS Solar and the Multi Plus. I suppose one limitation from the Multi RS compared to the Easy Solar. Maybe some downsides here about the Easy Solar too. It's been a really good product over the years that we've done these. One of the things we have struggled with over the years for these Victron Easy Solars is these newer models, the Easy Solar 2, with the generator auto start, has been a bit clunky of how to program and make that work. There's not as many options back actually having the color screen in, which is unfortunate. So we've had to go back to an old way of programming these ones here with the Easy Solar 2. But besides that, they're a really good unit when we've used them in the right application for the right situations. They can be used for three phases as well, but you can't parallel them. So you can actually have one inverter on each phase. And what I would actually recommend from an Easy Solar point of view, you'd use one Easy Solar on phase one and use a Multi Plus on phase two and phase three to make all that work. You don't have three Venuses in the situation in each, each, each system. I would just use one use an easy solar as one on the main phase and then have a multi plus on the other two phases. Now, same with the multi RS, it's been really good when we've used them for applications. It is a new product with Victron that's still working on things. One of the biggest complications we've had with them, we've tried to use them in the situation we're connected to the grid. We did a lot of R&D here with these products and I've had a lot of play around and a lot of the ESS is a little bit clunky. And look, if you want something really simple, it works really, really great. The problem when I've tried to do, my house is very complicated. I've got a few different systems here and I try and take advantage of the full Victron with a Serbro, with the full VRM platform. All the bells and whistles out there I've taken advantage with. So I suppose for me this here that when I'm putting it in my place, trying to play around, trying to make all the things, all the smarts I've got in my place, I feel like I'm taking a step backwards. But as an example, you know, I looked at installing one of these at my mum's here and how it was going to work in my mum's house. And I was really impressed. I think this was really simple. I suppose when I looked at my mum, could she control things? Could she change stuff in this here? To be able to do all that control, it was very, very simple when it comes to using the Victron Connect app to do things when it comes to the ESS, which in Australia at the moment, we're not allowed to use the Victrons in an ESS situation, unfortunately. Around the world and other countries, you can use these products in a Victron ESS. So when the grid's available, you can actually use these, which is great. Now, from a basic point of view, do everything that you want. I just wouldn't be trying to use one of these to integrate with Home Assist or anything like that, anything complicated, playing around the wholesale prices and getting it to do things with other third-party software and things like that. So it's a real simple program, real simple product that makes it easy to use if you just want to be self-sufficient, connected to the grid. When your batteries are flat, go back to the grid. Or if there's a weather event coming, you just want to charge your batteries from the grid, it's really simple to use it like that there. 
Now, one of the downsides with this here, a lot of people have actually tried to use this over the years with RVs and motorhomes. The problem you will have is the startup voltage. Depending on the size of the RV or motorhome you've got, it's actually the panel voltage, because the startup on these, I think it's about 80 volts. The startup voltage is actually 120 volts. So you need a minimum of 120 volts. So in a situation on a van, as an example, I really want to use one of these in my van. I thought it was a great idea to be able to use it in my van. The problem is with my van is I need 120 volts and I can't put enough solar panels on my roof to get 120 volts minimum startup. So your solar is really useless trying to use something like this in a van. And that's one of the biggest downsides with it. I've looked at buck boosters and DC DC converters. I'm on a mission to try and see if I can make one of these work in my van. But the reality is a more low voltage in the vans is probably better uh, if you've got a smaller van. If you've got a smaller vehicle, a low voltage, like going with a 24 volts is probably more beneficial. Me personally, I really want to go with the 48 volt because I can literally pull my batteries out at home, throw them in the car. When I go away for the weekend, a bit more storage. <laughs> leave home with one less battery and take them away. We actually have a customer that does that. He's got a really big system. He's, he's actually got a big Isuzu um, a big Isuzu off-road vehicle and he literally just takes a couple of batteries from his house and throws them in his motorhome when he's away and then when he gets back home takes them all out and puts them back in the house so he's always using his batteries to his full advantage uh, which is great if we can help save those resources and use them in both both ways so guys that's really about it the next couple of videos we actually will be doing some installs of these products to show you how simple and easy they can be installing and how we use them in an installation point of view if we've earned it we'd love to give this video a like and share it with someone that you think might get something out of it until next time, stay energized.